Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena games video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, this one built around Kenan Bonder Prodigy, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, a 2 mana 2-2 two -two legendary human druid, with the ability saying whenever we tap a non-land permanent for mana, add one mana of any type that permanent produced. So this works very well with mana creatures, as all of a sudden they can make even more mana, and that also ramps us into Kenan's activated ability for 7 mana, where we can take a look at the top 5 cards of our library and put a non-human creature card from among them onto the battlefield and the rest goes on the bottom. So we can't find Agent of Treachery with Kinnon, but we can find a whole host of other powerful non-human creatures, including Nyx Bloom Ancient, the 7 mana 5-5 five five enchantment creature elemental with Trample saying if we tap a permanent for mana, it produces three times as much of that mana instead. So another card that works very well with mana creatures, but Nyx Bloom Ancient also counts lands unlike Kinnon. So if we can ever find a copy of Nyx Bloom Ancient with Kinnon, then we'll be able to make even more mana, which we can once again spend on Kinnon's activated ability, which will find even more win conditions, and more copies of Nyx Bloom Ancient to once again spend more mana on Kinnon's ability, so it kind of fuels itself, and then eventually we can end the game with any number of creatures, including Tishana, Voice of Thunder, a 7 mana legendary Merfolk Shaman, whose power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in our hand, so we do have to be careful not to play Tishana with an empty hand, otherwise she is going to die before triggering her Enter the Battlefield ability, which says when she enters the battlefield, draw a card for each creature we control. So this also works very well with all the mana creatures, which can help us ramp into Tishana in the first place, and also says we have no maximum hand size, so Tishana will help us draw a ton of cards. And then we've got our four copies of Nyx Womb Ancient, we have two copies of Thorn Mammoth as our main removal spell in the deck as a 7 mana 6-6 six, six elephant with Trample, and whenever a Thorn Mammoth or another creature enters the battlefield under our control, Thorn Mammoth fights up to one target creature we don't control, so this can take out multiple creatures in the same turn. We've got two copies of Kogla, the Titan Ape, which is pretty similar to Thorn Mammoth as another big creature that can fight opposing creatures and also destroys artifacts or enchantments whenever Kogla attacks, and can also for one and a green return target human we control to its owner's hand to make Kogla indestructible, and Kinnon Bonder Prodigy is the only human in the deck, so it can also potentially combo with Kogla. And then we've got two copies of Dream Eater as a 6 mana 4 3 Nightmare Sphinx with Flash and Flying. And when Dream Eater enters the battlefield, we get to surveil 4, so maybe dig for additional missing combo pieces. And when we do, we can also turn target to non land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand, so it gives us even more interaction in creature form. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we're also an Umori the Collector Companion deck. It's definitely not an essential part of the deck, but it does fit in the curve nicely since we don't have much going on at 4 or 5 mana. Then at 1 mana of course we've got our full playset of Lenore Elves as a very powerful accelerant that works well with Kinnon. At 2 mana we've got Incubation Druid, which also taps for 1 mana of any color a land we control could produce, and adapts for 5 mana, putting 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, at which point it will make 3 mana of that color instead. So also synergizes very well with Nyx Bloom Ancient, because if we adapt the Incubation Druid, all of a sudden it will make 9 mana with a copy of Nyx Bloom Ancient, and gets tripled once again for each additional Nyx Bloom Ancient in play. We've got the full playset of Leafkin Druid, which adds double green if we control four or more creatures, so that also synergizes very well with Nyx Bloom Ancient, as it will make six mana with a copy of Nyx Bloom Ancient in play. Then we've got our Paradise Druid as a 2-1 with Hexproof, as long as it's untapped. We've got our four Kinons, and then four Merleaf Pixie as a 2-2 flyer, so that can also function as a mana creature. Then at 4 mana we've got a single copy of Nylea Keen-Eyed, which can function as a powerful mana sink if we have a lot of Nyx Bloom Ancients in play, but maybe didn't find a copy of Tishana or a copy of Kinnon. We can still use Nylea as a way to find more creatures with the 3 mana activated ability, and we also have plenty of green devotion to turn Nylea into a creature. And then we've got all the win conditions that we've already covered, 2 Dream Eaters, 2 Coglas, 2 Thorn Mammoths, 4 Nyx Bloom Ancient, and 4 Tishana Voice of Thunder. And then taking a look at our mana base, we're not playing any copies of Ancient Ziggurat, despite being an all-creature deck, since we can't spend the mana from Ziggurat on activated abilities from creatures like Kinnon. But then we have 8 Forests and 4 Islands, 1 copy of Castle Garenbrig, which can also help us ramp, and then 4 Breeding Pools and 4 Hinterland Harbor. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. 
Alright, we're on the play, facing a Gigantha companion deck. We've got a potentially pretty powerful draw here. Paradise Druid fixes for blue, so we can play Pixie and Tishana. Let's see what we're up against. Turn on forests. I'll play the pixie now, I think. Paradise Druid pairs a bit better with Umori than pixie does. Point on Gruul. So Umori into Paradise Druid seems fine. So we can empty our hands. Now I'll try to play Tishana with my uh, next card still in hand. Alright, Wayward Surtooth, nice. Opponent on the Experimental Frenzy deck. And there's Kinnon, perfect. So you can play Kinnon and then still Empty most of my hands, and alright, opponent packs it up. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Don't have any Kinons, but we have two mana creatures that can ramp into Mori, and then hopefully we'll be able to hardcast the other creatures in our hand. Definitely not an ideal hand, but I think it's still keepable. Turn one Crib Breaker, so maybe facing a zombie deck. Gem Palm Polluter cycled. So maybe your opponent's struggling to hit their land drops, since otherwise they would usually keep that in hand for as long as possible. Can already play Omori next turn if we want to. Although our opponent might be playing Murderous Rider. It's gonna be a Midnight Reaper for now. I'll take one. I think I want to go double Incubation Druid instead of uh, Umori here. It's a bit better against a potential removal spell. And if they don't kill anything, we can perhaps run out Kogla. Drawing Kinnon would be great, because then we can play Kinnon and still have access to 7 mana afterwards. Alright, there's a Murderous Rider, takes out Incubation Druids. So we'll need to draw land in order to play Kogla. And there's a land. I think that's still the plan here. And we'll fight the Midnight Reaper. And then Kogla hopefully makes for a good distraction while we ramp into even more things. Alright, so this is a good turn for Umori into Pixie. And then we've got a nice full board for this Tishana Voice of Thunder to draw even more cards. Second Gem Palm Polluter. So we're down to 10. And our opponent can start drawing cards with Crib Breaker. There's Kinnon. So let's see here. I can play Nyx Bloom Ancient and then still play Kinnon. And that's my turn. Or I can play Kinnon. 6, 7, 8, still have 8 mana. Play Nyx Bloom Ancient. I guess it's a little bit more exciting. <laughs> so don't have enough mana to still play Tishana, but I do have Paradise Root untapped to potentially use Kogla's ability. But I'm just gonna chill, and then next turn we should be able to go off with Tishana, drawing a million cards. T 
Timurit calls it that. Pretty good way of finding another gem palm. I think we'll start by playing Tishan instead of activating Kinnon. Find another Nyx Bloom Ancient, which we want to get in play as soon as possible. Also want to adapt Incubation Druids, because then uh, it taps for even more mana thanks to Nyx Bloom Ancient. Alright, and now we can uh, produce even more mana, play Thorn Mammoth. And start killing the opponent's stuff. Opponent activates Grip Breaker, but we might be able to just kill them here. And our opponent concedes, sweet. Still had a lot of mana to work with here, so we could probably empty our hand if we wanted to. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. We've got a pretty good hand if our Lanor Elf survives, so we'll try it. Opponent with a turn one Soul Warden. So we're facing the life gain deck. So we shouldn't expect too much removal at least, so we'll be able to do our thing. And hopefully it's more powerful than the opponent's thing. Although a turn to a Janice Pride Mates is not what we wanted to face. So I can play Kinnon into Incubation Druids. Next turn we'll have access to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 mana potentially with the castle. The Ozolith, nice. Good combo with the Ajani Sprite Mates. Sarah Ascendance. And Leonin Vanguard, so this Ajani Sprite Mates already up to an 8 8. And we'll have to take it here. Alright, so I could play Nyx Bloom Ancient this turn, although. I'm gonna have to be on Chumblock duty on the Sajani's Pride Mate, so it's better to try and play Nylia with enough devotion and have an indestructible blocker available. Could also activate Kinnon and hope to hit probably the uh, a Nightmare to bounce Sajani's Pride Mate, but we can just activate this. And then play Omori and Nylia. And then we're waiting for the Sarah Ascendant to hit us in the face. But at least we've got a blocker for a Johnny Sprite Mates. So Sarah Ascendant gains flights, but the Merleaf Pixie can block it next turn if needed. So both decks are doing their thing. So probably want to start by getting Nyx Bloom Ancient in play. Costs two less mana, thanks to Nylia and Umori. 
So sadly I can't adapt Incubation Druid and have it still tap for mana afterwards. So I guess I'm just gonna play Pixie. Play Paradise Druids and then... I can still activate Nylia. And we'll pass a turn. Ooh, a Johnny Strength of the Pride. She's gonna exile her entire board. That was a pretty good draw from our opponents. So despite a very explosive start on our side with a lot of mana, opponent had the right answers. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Hands not amazing. Do I still keep it on the draw? It might be a little slow without Lander Elves or Kinon. But I do have a pretty fast Nyx Bloom Ancient. I guess I'm still missing a payoff afterwards. Let's take a Mulligan. This is potentially much better, although I'm missing the blue mana for Kinnon. Still gonna keep. And then do we get rid of Nyx Bloom? Or do we get rid of Forests and hope to draw an island? Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna need to draw an island for this hand to function anyway. Can be a Stitcher Supplier, so some sort of graveyard deck. Alright, it's the Storm Herald deck trying to reanimate a bunch of enchantments from the graveyard. So, this turn, I guess we'll play a Leafkin. And really hope to find blue mana next turn. Otherwise, we can play Double Incubation Druid or Umori. Another Stitcher Supplier. And there's a Prodigious Growth. So yeah, this uh, Storm Herald could already kill us next turn. Or come close. Another Supplier first. Storm Heralds in the graveyard and Binding can eventually get it back if they don't have one in hand already. There goes my blue mana. So I can play Nyx Bloom and then uh, that's about it. Yeah, I guess I'll play Nyx Bloom. So next turn we're basically dead, unless we can find... I guess blue mana, play Kinnon, and then I can use Incubation Druids to make blue mana as well, and hope to find Dream Eater to bounce the Storm Herald. Something along those lines. Ancestral Mask, the Stitcher Supplier, I'll take five. All right, there's a blue mana, so there's still hope. Play Kinnon. Can adapt Incubation Druids. And then we need to use Kinnon in the opponent's turn to hit Dream Eater, I think. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'll just pass for now. Could attack with Nyx Bloom Ancients. Don't think it matters if we mill them more with a supplier. I 
Alternatively, I could activate Kinnon in the hopes of finding Tishana, but we can still do that in the opponent's turn and draw into a copy of uh, Dream Eater to bounce the opponent stuff. Not a prodigious growth. All right, let's pass the turn. I guess I can split up the auras to have two lethal threats here. So I'll go full control and then Storm Herald resolves. Could have also tried to hit the uh, elephant to find the opponent's creatures if we hit enough stuff to find all of them before they get the enchantments back. Maybe that was better. Alright, so opponent's got three pretty huge trampling creatures. Although they do rely on ancestral mask, so if we can remove a couple enchantments here, we could still be okay. All right, so let's start by activating Kinnon. Hit Thor Mammoth. So yeah, if I got the Thor Mammoth first before they got all the enchantments back, I could have potentially fought all their creatures. Still probably get Thor Mammoth. And then no fights. Activate Kinnon. Tishana can help me draw into a Dream Eater, which is probably the card we want to find the most at this point. Alright, double Dream Eater, so we're still good here, I think. It's a lot of mana. So no fights, surveil bunch. Bound Storm Heralds. And then play another Dream Eater. And then I think I think I'm good to fight the smaller Stitcher Supplier here. Alright. Well, I guess it worked out. But as I've said, I probably should have just tried to activate Kinnon in response to the Storm Herald trigger. So, do we have lethal? If we attack with everyone, 11, 12, 13, plus 8, so yeah, we should have it if we just send everyone. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Facing Omori. And we've got a pretty decent hand. No Kinons just yet, but Elves on turn 1 is always a powerful start. Facing a turn one Soul Warden, alright. Typically not a card you see alongside Omori. So this turn we can play Paradise Druids and play a Taplands. So 
So black white life gain deck perhaps. Saracens. All right, so now we can go Umori into Leafkin Druids, which maybe I should have played the Merleaf Pixie last turn instead of Paradise Druids to make better use of Umori's discounts. Sarah Ascendant's probably going to hit me for six in the air, but we do have Dream Eater to potentially interact with it. So this turn I could get the Ancient in play. Is that something I'm interested in? Take another hit from the Flyers, or I can try and play Dream Eater, bounce the Saracendants, maybe ambush the Angel and surveil towards more action. I don't think I can do both this turn. Yeah, I think this wants to be a Dream Eater turn. So let's do that. Pride mate also going to get pretty big. At least their opponent's tapped out, so they won't be able to replay the Saracendant this turn. And I do want them to attack with the Angel of Vitality, so I can block it with the Dream Eater. I'll take another Dream Eater. So this now makes three blue and this makes six green. So we can play Pixie and then Dream Eater. And then we gotta look for Tishana, some way of drawing cards or a Kinnom to spend all this mana on. Don't need more Nyxbloom Ancients. So I'll have to chum block the Janice Pride Mates. Probably with the Dream Eater, since the Pixie is a bit more useful for the time being. Could also jump with Umori, which isn't doing a whole lot, and keep the extra flyer. Because I could double block Sarah Ascendants. Yeah, I'll block with Umori. Perfect. Play Tishana. Uh, maybe have this first. Tishana dies right away sadly, but we do get to draw a lot of cards. And 
Feather's Cannon and a Thorn Mammoth. Alright, so we finally get to fight these annoying Soul Wardens. So we'll start there. And then probably start activating Kinnon. Find another Tishana or Nyxbloom Ancients. Might still be Ancient here. And then I could trade Thorn Mammoth for the Sarasendants. And then uh, activate Kinnon some more. Find another Tishana. And then play Kogla. Take out Seraph. Play a Thorn Mammoth. Luckily our opponent is playing Omori as their companion, so we don't need to fear a Jani exiling our entire board with them being above 35 life. It's gonna be Omori, that's fine. Nylia can block the Ajani Sprite Mates. And then we should be able to close out the game in a timely fashion. 19 cards left. Don't have any Androids Forerunners in the deck, which would be a good way to close out the game otherwise. But Tishana's pretty big. Although not bigger than the Pride Mate, and I've already used my two Dream Eaters. Anything else I can do? I mean, I can take out all the smaller creatures, no problem. Does playing another Tishana do anything for me? Not really. Get in there with as much as possible. Bone probably blocks Tishana. I guess, do I want to play another Tishana? That seems a little risky. Maybe just activate Kin on a bunch. Another Kogla. Doesn't seem necessary. Can activate a couple incubation druids. Alright, I think we're good.
And this should be game. GG's. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a pretty nice opening hand. Turn one Lunar Elves, turn two Kinon plus Incubation Druid or Leafkin. And we're off to the races. Facing Breeding Pool. And Fabled Passage. Some sort of Bant's deck. Alright, so... We've got a good start. Hopefully no Shatter the Sky in our future. And there's Tishana. Which... I can already play here if I wanted to. Draw four cards. It's a bit of a hedge against a sweeper. Yeah, I think that's fine. And then we've got some nice leftovers. If there is a shatter here. No double whites. Migration path, all right, so we're just ramping into big stuff over there. But Tishana doesn't mess around. I guess we can play another Tishana first, just to pump the first one. So hit for 13. Could have also played Lanarals first, since that kind of breaks even in terms of uh, cards in hand. Do I want to commit anything else to the board? Yeah, I guess we'll play one more creature out here. Mirari's Wake, doubles all mana, and our Juvenator, which can technically chum block Tishana, but we've got plenty of ways to get rid of it here. Let's find it with Kogla. Alright, sweet. So yeah, Kinon putting in a ton of work. Didn't even need activated ability this game, but just casting Tishana was enough. Tishana, another card that synergizes very well in this deck, since it pairs so well with all the mana creatures in the deck, which we want to be playing anyways for Kinnon, and then a great hit with Kinnon's activated ability as well. So overall, I've been having a lot of fun with this deck. It is vulnerable to sweeper effects, so for opponents playing Shatter the Sky or some other sweeper, and we have all mana creatures in play, then we're gonna have a bad time. So if you move away from Omori as your companion, you can potentially make the deck a little bit more resilient to sweeper effects by including some artifact ramp like Mindstone, which still works quite well with Kinnon, and with the Nyx Bloom Ancient, although it doesn't synergize as well with Tishana, which wants us to have a lot of creatures in play. So if we do see a change in the companion mechanic, and we don't want to play Omori as companion anymore, then we can maybe make that change. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.